Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're going to be looking at some VS Code shortcuts to help you navigate the text editor a little easily with your keyboard and also write code a little faster and more efficiently. And it might not seem like that at first if you're used to using the mouse because you're still learning the shortcuts. But once you really get the hang of it, you'll find that you'll you'll increase your productivity. Uh, I tend to use the mouse all the time in videos and you know tutorials, courses, because it helps with teaching. It helps show you guys exactly where I am if I'm opening this file or choosing this line or closing this file. But when I'm off camera, I try not to use the mouse as much as possible. And I'm still not a, you know, a pro at it, but practice makes perfect. So you just want to keep practicing and try not to use the mouse. So I have this this gist here that I'm going to put uh, in the description, which has all the commands that we'll be looking at. And I have the Mac and the Windows version of the commands. I'm on a Mac, so I'll be using the, the top versions here. Uh, and I broke it up into three different parts. So open and view. So basically opening and viewing certain parts of the editor, like the terminal, the command palette and so on. Working with files. So navigating the sidebar and opening files, switching tabs, stuff like that. And then code editing where, you know, we're dealing with uh, moving lines of code around and moving the cursor quickly so you can get to places quickly and stuff like that. All right. So let's start off at the top here at, with this open view section. And the first one is, is pretty well known. It's to open the command palette, which is command shift P. I honestly don't even know how to open the command palette without that. I don't even know if you can, but this will open the command palette where you can do pretty much anything. If you want a new file, new folder, new terminal, if you want to change your theme, if you want to go to your settings or uh, what else you can change your Python interpreter, basically anything you want, you can do or find from the command palette. So that's very helpful and just escape to to get out of it. So if you want to access your, your global settings, you can use command comma that will open up the settings tab and um, You know, you can obviously search for settings and stuff. And if you want to close a tab, everything in VS Code is a tab. You can use command W and that will close the active tab. All right. So let's see for the terminal. You want to do control even on a Mac. It's going to be control back tick and you can toggle it that way instead of having to go up to view and then terminal. It's a much quicker way to access it um, to toggle the sidebar. We can do command B. Okay, so we can, if we want to close it, if we need a little more room to write code and then open it to view our file structure, we can easily do that with command B. If you want to open up a whole new window of for VS Code, you can do command shift N and that will open up a new window, um, usually with this welcome tab. So you can close the tab with command W. And then if you want to close the entire window, just hit command W again when there's no tabs open and it will close it. All right. So, I mean, that's pretty much it as far as the main navigating the main parts of the editor. As far as working with files, a lot of times you'll be going over here, clicking, opening files, clicking in the file. If you want to just be able to, to basically focus into the sidebar, you can do command shift E and that will bring you over there. And then you can use your up and down arrow keys to navigate the structure. And if you want to open up a folder, you simply do command down. So you can see I can open these folders up here uh, that one was already open and then to make it close, you can do command up and you can close them up. Okay. if you want to open up a file like this main JS enter is not going to do it. That's going to actually make it so you can edit the file name so you can rename it. So I'll hit enter again. And then if you want to open it, you want to do command down. All right. So that opens up main JS. Now I just want to show you something. If I were to go back over and then open up another file like this bootstrap file, notice the main JS tab is no longer there. The file is no longer open. That's because it was in preview mode and I didn't because I didn't make any changes to it. So it just it just closed automatically. Now, if I were to make a change here, like I don't know, just delete that and put it back. Now we have this circle up here, which means the file's been changed, but I haven't saved it. So if I go back over to my sidebar and I open up main JS now, notice that bootstrap is still open because it has changes that were not saved. Now, I just want to show you if um, let me uh, let's close this up. I just want to show you that if you want to. If you if you don't if you want to disable preview mode, you can just open up your settings and search for enable preview. 
right here, enable preview, which will probably be checked by default and you can uncheck that. And now if we go over and we open up main JS and even if I don't make any changes or anything, if I go over and open up another file, main JS now stays open. Okay, so it, it just opens. It doesn't open in preview mode. So good to know that. Um, let's go ahead and open up another file. So open up the states.json. So now we have three tabs open and instead of using my mouse to go and click on each tab, I can actually do um, control tab and it'll show all the tabs that are open. I can just tap tab and it'll go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one, or I can just keep hitting tab to select which one I want. I can also do page up and page down to select the first and last. All right, so you can quickly move through your tabs rather than having to go up and uh, click on them. Now, another really valuable shortcut is command shift T, which will if you close some tabs, like let's say we close up the bootstrap and we'll close up main JS. And let's say we realize we have to go back in there to change something. Well, normally you'd have to take your mouse and go find it in your folder structure. You might have a, a really large folder structure, but you can just simply do command shift T. And now you can see I have main JS back. And if I do it again, I have my bootstrap file back. All right. So that's really helpful. Command shift T. All right. So let's um, let's close these up. Now, there's also a quick open with command P and that will just show you all the files that are available. So if I want to open up main JS, I can do that. If I want to open up something in split mode, like let's say I want this states.json to the right. I can just hold down command and hit enter and it will open up, open it up to the side rather than opening it up in another tab. Um, so we can do that as well. Uh, we can also open things up onto the side. Let's close that up from the uh, sidebar here. So if I want to open up states.json from here, I can do control enter and that will open it up onto the side like that. All right. So let's see if we want to create a new file. Let's go over here and let's say we wanted to create a new JavaScript file. We could do command N, create a new file and let's just do console log and then we'll save it with command S obviously and then say test.js. Okay, so we create a new file, save it. Um, if we want to delete it, we can go back over here and just do control, not control, command or control on Windows and delete and that will delete the file. All right, so I think that's yeah, that's pretty much it. We can also open from the Explorer like if we're over here and we want to go into the JS folder, we can do command O and that will open the Explorer if you want to do it that way as well. All right, so let's see zoom if you want to zoom in. So if we open up a file and we want to zoom, we can do command plus command minus will zoom out. And if we want to split the file that's currently open, we can do command backslash. All right. So let's take a look at some code editing stuff. So we'll just open up uh, main JS. And in main JS, let's do Let's see. So if we want to go to the start or end of a line, like let's say we're in the middle of the line here, we can just hold down command and then left arrow. That'll bring us to the beginning and command right arrow will bring us to the end. You can also use home and end keys as well, which I don't use very much. Um, now, if you want to kind of move along the line quicker than just one character at a time, you can hold down option or alt on Windows and you can see it just goes basically by word or by entity or whatever you want to call it. So it'll go from search through the equals document to the end of get element by ID onto the beginning of the string, the end of the string and the end of the line. Okay, uh, let's see if you want to go to the end of the file, you can hold command down. That'll bring me down to the end here. You can see it's at the my cursors at the bottom and command up will bring me back up to the very top. So cut, copy and paste really easy and you don't have to be at the beginning of the line. You could be anywhere in here and I could do command C to copy, go down here and command V. Or if I want to cut it, I can do command X and cut it and then command V to paste it. So pretty easy. 
Um, if I want to move a line up and down, I can hold option or alt on windows and then hit up or down and I can move this particular line wherever I want. All right. If I want to copy it down, I can do shift option down that will copy it down. If I want to copy it up, I can do shift option up and notice my cursor stays at the top because I'm copying it up rather than down. So that's copying up and down. Uh, if you want to remove a line, you can do shift command K, which I don't use that much. I usually just cut it um, inserting a line. So instead of having to go you know, to the end and hitting enter, which I did for a long time when I first started, you can actually be anywhere in here and just hold command and hit enter. If you don't hold command, it's going to go like that. It's going to put the, you know, the next character onto the next line. But if you hold command, it'll just insert the line. So let's see, jump to matching brackets. So if you are at a bracket, so for instance, on this function right here and you want to go to the matching one, you can do shift command and backslash. And now notice my cursor's down here where it ends. And then if I do it again, it'll go back up to the starting bracket. So you can easily find where something ends. If I want to know where this inner function here ends, I can just again shift command and backslash and it brings me to the cursor or not to the cursor, but to the uh, curly brace. So another thing we can do is add comments really easily with command and forward slash. So this will give you a single line comment. Uh, if we want to do multiple line comments or block comments, we can do shift option A and it will give us this style comment that we can easily put in. All right, so let's see. Now I want to look at what do I want to look at? Let's look at highlighting code. All right, so instead of like, let's say we wanted to highlight matches instead of grabbing my mouse and dragging it like that, we could easily just go up to it and we could hold down shift and then I could either do one character at a time like that and unhighlight it if I want. Or remember when we hold option, it goes by word or by entity or element, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I could actually hold down option and then hold down shift and just highlight the entire word at once like that. Uh, I could even do the whole line. If I go to the beginning of the line, I could do shift and then command and then right arrow and I'll select the whole line like that. And then you could also hold shift and go up or down and select, you know, a whole block of code. And if you wanted to copy it down, we could do shift option down, which we already learned about. Uh, but yeah, so you can do stuff like that. Now, if we want to select instances of something like, let's say this matches variable here, we could do shift option and then left arrow, which is going to select it or highlight it. And then we could do command D to select the next variable of matches. And I could actually start to type and you can see that both are changing. All right. If I wanted to select the next instance of matches, I can once again do command D. And now we have three matches variables selected and I can change them. Okay. And if I hit escape, it'll just take me back to the one cursor. And this is really helpful because instead of going to each variable with your mouse and changing it to hello and then finding the next one and hello or even or even going to, you know, search and replace. You can easily just select them all and just change them. All right. So uh, we can also insert cursors, multiple cursors. If I want to change matches by putting a cursor here, I can hold option and put another cursor here and another one here and then I can you know, change them all at the same time. So we can do things that way as well, which is really helpful. And if we want to find a certain function or variable or anything like that, basically go to some kind of entity in our in our code, we can do command shift O and that will give us a list of all the functions and stuff and it'll actually take us to that area. So if I want to go to search states, it'll take me to search states. All right. So there's other shortcuts. I'm sure there's other ones that you guys use a lot, but these are ones that really help me out. Um, if you have any other suggestions, you can leave them in the comments. But hopefully this helped at least some of you guys out that are really dependent on the mouse. And again, I would I would highly recommend that you try to try to not use the mouse at all. And, and it might seem counterproductive at first, but once you get the hang of it, I think that um, you'll become a, a faster programmer. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.